Movies are illusion. It's all magic. It's like like a magician. You don't want to know how the mag magician does the trick while you're watching it. I mean, it's okay now to know because it's already, you've seen it, maybe. Have you seen the movie? Well, if you haven't seen the movie, you better stop this and go see the movie and then come on back to the this stuff and then we'll tell you all about how it's done. We get to the restaurant and my wife, Rhea Perlman, my real wife, plays Mrs. Wormwood, is telling me, take your hat off, Harry. Harry, take your hat off. I can't. This is a nice place. You can't wear a hat inside. His hat won't come off. And I, what's the matter with your hat? And so, like, I try to pull the hat off of his head. I can't get it off. I can't get it off. Oh. Oh. Just a minute. I'm gonna get this pull hat it, off. It, I'm it. pulling it. What we did was we had this harness on me, and I had these two wires going up into the hat. So they were like, I was holding it down with my body, and Rhea was pulling, trying to get it off my head. Until finally, it's time to rip the rim off, which is already ready to be ripped off, because that's how you do it. And then you go, and that's when the stunt people take over, because I can't really do backflips on tables. And I fall into the, the dessert tray, and the desserts go flying through the air. <laughs> the flying food was the most fun to do, I think, because we literally got to put food on these little catapults, you know? <laughs> you know, you put a fulcrum down here, and you put, like, a, you know, a teeter-totter, and we put a, a, a cream tart on there and just go, blah! Sometimes it would whack against the ceiling. We had to do it again. You know, sometimes it would hit the cameraman. You know, it was just like trying to hit and miss. And of course, Matilda's lands right in front of her with a fork in it. She got to eat a lot of that cream pie. Yeah. I could go for some pie myself right now. Kids are always very excited to see TVs blow up, or anything blow up. I mean, don't you like to watch things blow up? That's really fun. We had the camera there. We had a big plexiglass shield so that we shot through the plexiglass so that we could protect the camera operator. And then we had the isolated television. And the special effects guys who know what they're doing, they had their wires running off, you know. <laughs> and the camera's moving in on it. Zooming in on it, closer and closer and closer. <laughs> and it got to a certain point, and I was watching the monitor, and I give a signal, and Pwah! It was so great. I was screaming my head off, right? I was screaming my head off in that scene, because, I mean, it was really crazy. I kept asking if we could blow up another one, and Mara, she wanted to blow up like a million of them. She just wanted to blow up TVs every day after that. Hey, you know, you kids, we blew up this television because it was very safe the way we did it. And you would not want to blow up your TV or even try to blow up your TV because, anyways, if you did that, you wouldn't have a TV to watch. And then what would you do? You couldn't even watch this DVD. I had a crane, a very, very big crane that went up and, and came down, and we put her in a harness. Hi, Look at that smart There you go. Okay. Okay, how's that feel? Uh, here, stretch your legs out really Jacqueline loved being in the harness. She was like, but the thing about Jacqueline that I remember really well is that she read constantly. She read as much as Matilda. She read a lot of books. That looks sensational. You okay, Jacqueline? That looks sensational. Wow. Okay. 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 Okay.
Jelly beans. Little background. Are you gonna shout down jelly beans? That's when she wants us to stop. Yeah. Yes. Action. Don't smile. It's horrifying. Ah! Oh. Oh. Wow. <laughs> we had special braids made, right? So that we could swing her around in a wide shot. We like popped out and we'd had to glue them back on. Everybody's horrified. <laughs> Was she good or what? You are flying, kiddo. You are flying. <laughs> I can't believe it. Laugh. No jelly beans. No jelly beans. No jelly beans, she jelly beans knows babe. No jelly beans. No I think my biggest challenge on Matilda was making Pamela Ferris, who is a lovely woman, look like the mean trunch bull. Ah, fresh meat. We took a face cast of her and um, made some pieces for her out of gelatin. We made her a nose tip. And we also made her eye bags, so it made her look a little older and more tired. That in there. And give a real a cruel look. I can't scrunch my eyes up because they're still wet at the moment, so I have to stay fairly. But once they're dry and in place, you can they're just like skin. And I'm not aware of this at all. This is amazing. Use the rod, beat the child. That's my motto. The next step uh, we did to Pam was I started coloring in um, all of her like little imperfections on her face, like freckles. I put a lot of broken blood vessels. Like you, sometimes you'll see somebody has like a little vein on her face. Well, I drew in hundreds of those. And then I took kind of a coloring wand, like a mascara wand, and I colored in all the peach fuzz on her face which gave her a little bit of a mustache and a little bit of a beard, and I darkened her eyebrows. Wow. There she comes. It's like a cornfield after a storm, isn't it? We painted the teeth with kind of like a tobacco stain kind of a color um, that just kind of gave them a little bit of a yellowy edge to them. Pamela was really great about us letting us do whatever we wanted to do to her to really get her into that trench bull character look. It's delicious. When you see the end result, it's so uh, detailed and believable that I can look in the mirror and I believe it. Confess. When Pam came into the trailer in the morning, she was just Pam Ferris, and when she left, she was a trench bull, and I help her achieve that. It was really, really a fun scene to do. He ate a lot of cake. We made big, huge, wonderful cakes. Mm. They must have filmed that for two weeks. I remember, oh, whenever, when the rest of us would go home, the children in the classroom stuff, we'd go home, Pam and Bruce would come back and they would film that cake scene. Mm. Mm. I saw that little boy pass me sometimes looking terribly green about the gills and I thought, what's wrong with him? And I didn't realize he'd been out there eating piece after piece of cake. Now, is she in his light? No. Yeah, I was, wasn't I? Okay, not anymore. Okay. Wait, go out, Pam, back out. Let him spit. Wait, I'm sorry. Cut, cut. This is really gross, okay? I'm going to tell you anyway. What we, used to, what we did with Bruce Bogtrotter is we made him stuff his face, but then I would cut the camera. Okay, cut. Let him spit. Cut. Don't wipe his mouth, though. Right away. He would spit it out because if he would have eaten all that cake, he would have, he really exploded. I'm telling you, it was so big. It was so much cake. And the cake was good, too. I had a lot of it. Mm -mm. It was really, really uh, a fun scene to do. If you have something that is bothering you about, you're, you're shy about something, sometimes it's best to go right after that thing. 
You know, just go look it straight in the face and say, I'm embarrassed to do this. So, you know, and Mara did. She came up to me and said, you know, I really am embarrassed about uh, dancing in front of all these people. And I said, well, you know why? That's because they're not dancing. You're the only one dancing. She said, yeah. So I said, okay, here we go. And I put the music on and we all danced. Everybody danced. The craft service people, the boom guy, the, the special effects man, the, the cinematographer. The only person who couldn't dance was the guy with holding the camera because he would have, we would have had this. So he just moved his feet like that, you know. Most of those things, with the cards flying out and dancing around, we did with, in the computer, computer-generated image, which is called CGI. Everybody danced. That's a really good way to get over things with you and your friends. If there's something that's bothering you, see if you can get everybody to do it, you know? <laughs> You can't wait around for the wind to blow. You're making movies. Making movies. You can't wait around. You gotta hurry up. Everybody wants a movie yesterday. The scene when, when Matilda goes to the house at night and causes all the crazy things to happen that frighten the trench bowl, um, that was actually filmed on a soundstage at Sony in a perfect replica of the house that was built inside. I had massive wind machines, big, uh, fun machines that they used on, you know, big movies, on pirate movies and on the perfect storm Action! where there's big wind outside and I put these things on and had the actors walk through them Action! there's always a trick there's always some kind of like when Matilda makes the 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 uh, Miss Honey, the first time she shows Miss Honey her powers, she's able to make that pitcher rise. There was a pitcher, this great silver pitcher, but it had a pole attached to the bottom, and the pole went through a hole in the desk. So here's the pitcher, and there's some chap sitting under there, and we, they sort of go, okay, well, then the pitcher goes up, and someone's sending a signal to someone across the room, and then the pitcher, the guy raises it up on a thing, and then I push it down. <laughs> like this. But then, later on, in post-production, we erased the pole. Well, you know what was really fun to do was the chalk. Oh my, this was so much fun. The chalk. The method that really worked the best, inside this piece of chalk was a magnet a really strong magnet. And on the other side of the blackboard was a guy who was writing backwards. So you could move the magnet on the back of the chalkboard and it would make the chalk move around on the front. Somebody had to be behind the blackboard writing backwards, but we made it easier because we wrote all the letters on the back of the blackboard backwards so he could see what he had to do. So when the erasers are hitting the trench bowl, they're actually on sticks, and there are a couple guys off stage beating her with these erasers on sticks. And all the kids were going crazy. There was chalk dust flying everywhere. Everybody was screaming. And even though it looked like the trench pole was getting hurt, in fact, it was all, everybody was just really laughing because she was having a great time and the erasers were soft, so it all ended well. No trench poles were hurt in the making of the movie. Mara and I are sitting in our pajamas in our perfect life and she uses her magic to pull a book off the bookshelf. How we did that was I had a guy on a skateboard laying on his back there was somebody lying with sort of a fishing pole or something. And on the pole was the book. And he laid on his back, and somebody dragged him with a rope right across the room. And she grabbed the book. And when she grabbed the book, it came off of the pole. You're the actor, so we have to look at the book, and we have to look at each other, and pretend you're not seeing a six-foot-four chap lie on the floor. 
Mara was so good at never getting phased, really, by all the pandemonium going around, she would look at the book and it would be about the book as if the book just flew into our hand miraculously and there were no special effects that did it.